The Video System Manager is a high-quality monitoring and recording system for C-Snake and Mini C-Snake pipe inspection cameras. The Video System Manager includes a high-resolution monitor, commercial-grade VCR, and camera control unit, housed in a scratch, dent, and splash-resistant case with internal storage compartments for the power cord and other system accessories. The Video System Manager's wheels, skids, and fold-away slide handle make it easy to transport to and from the job site. Removable doors provide protection during transport and act as a sunshade in brightly lit areas. The Video System Manager gives you a choice of three different viewing positions to fit your working environment. Large, easy-to-access controls make the Video System Manager fast to set up and easy to use on the job. The Video System Manager can be used with its built-in microphone for hands-free recording or with its waterproof keyed microphone. The first part of this video will cover basic operation. In the second part, we'll demonstrate how to use the Video System Manager to record a pipe inspection. To position the VSM on its stands, unfold the rear tilt stand and position it around the wheels. Then unfold the front tilt stand. The VSM can also be positioned on its back and has rubber feet to keep it from sliding. The removable doors have magnetic latches that hold them open in three distinct positions. To remove the doors, open the top door, slide the release latch on the right hinge, and tilt the door out of the case. Remove the right and left doors in the same manner. To reattach the doors, start with the left door first. Fit the pin on the bottom of the door into the hole in the case and tilt the door back into the case. Attach the right and top doors in the same way. The ground fault interrupt is designed for use with a properly wired three-prong outlet. The reset button must be pushed every time the GFI is plugged in or the video system manager will not power on. We recommend testing the GFI for proper operation every time you use it. If the GFI is functioning correctly, the reset button will pop up when the test button is pressed. After you test the GFI, remember to press the reset button again. The camera's interconnect cord plugs into the matching connector on the power supply. Orient the connector so the label is on top, push it in fully, and tighten the locking sleeve. Turning on the VSM also turns on the VCR and monitor and causes the power switch to glow steadily. If the camera is not plugged in, or there is a problem with its connection, the power switch will blink in an SOS pattern. The dimmer transmitter knob is used to adjust the brightness of the camera's LEDs. When turned counterclockwise until it clicks, it also activates the mini C-Snake inline transmitter and causes the power switch to blink steadily. The volume control audio off knob has three separate functions. During playback, it controls the volume level of the speaker. Turning the knob counterclockwise until it clicks turns off both the microphone and the speaker. This knob does not act as a record level control for the microphone. The record level is set automatically by the Video System Manager. The Video System Manager includes two microphones. The hands-free microphone has a working distance of 1 to 10 feet, depending on the noise level at the job site. The keyed microphone also functions as a speaker during playback and is controlled with the volume control audio off knob. To use the microphone, turn on the volume control audio off knob and key the side switch. To mute the microphone, release the side switch. When the VCR is recording, the audio LED gives a visual indication of the audio status. When a microphone is turned off or muted, the LED is off. When a microphone is turned on or keyed, the LED glows dimly. And when the sound level is adequate for recording, the LED glows brightly. In noisy environments, the microphone indicator light may glow brightly even when you are not speaking. This indicates that the background noise level is probably too loud to get a good recording with the hands-free microphone, and you may want to switch to the keyed microphone instead. The monitor's brightness and contrast controls can be adjusted to suit the light level of your working environment. We also recommend leaving the monitor's power switch on all the time, and using the video system manager's power switch to turn the entire system on and off. To record an inspection, insert a blank tape into the VCR. Press the front panel record button to start recording. When the VCR is in record mode, the record LED lights up. If your VCR is different than the one you see here, 
refer to your VCR instruction manual for the location of the record LED. To stop recording, press the front panel record button again. You can also use the VCR's remote to start and stop recording. Whichever method you use to start recording must also be used to stop recording. During this segment, we are going to suggest one possible approach to recording a pipe inspection. You'll probably use different methods for different customers and situations, but the same general considerations apply. First, you'll want to tailor your presentation to fit each customer's needs. Some customers may want to see the entire pipe, for example, while others may only want to see the problem areas. Secondly, you'll want to describe what you're doing and what the customer is seeing inside the pipe. In the method we're demonstrating here, you'll inspect the pipe first without recording to determine the time, distance, and difficulty involved in getting to the problem, and to get a feel for what you want to show and tell the customer. Once you've finished your pre-inspection, insert a blank tape and test your record capabilities if you've not already done so. It's good practice to label the tape with job information before recording to make the tape easier to find later on. Begin the tape with a brief introduction that includes basic information you or your customer may want to refer to later. It's July the 23rd, 1998. We're doing a video inspection of the Harris property at 4711 Elm Street. And the inspection is going to be performed with a clean out in the walkway area. Clean out is a two inch clean out behind the laundry sink in the garage. Once the camera's inside the pipe, Show the customer what a good pipe looks like. As you push the camera through the pipe, describe what the customer is seeing. Okay, we're into the pipe. It appears to be two inch ABS black plastic pipe. This is a clean section of pipe, but ahead is the 90 degree turn going down into the horizontal portion of the pipe. You can see a little bit of build up, not much. If you can get to the problem area quickly, Explain that you'll be pushing the camera rapidly and without comment. If you don't want to record sound during this time, remember that you can turn off the microphone. We'll be moving more rapidly, and I won't be making any further comments, so I'll turn off the microphone until we reach the problem area. If getting to the problem area will be difficult or time-consuming, you may want to stop the recording until you get to the problem area. If you do this, say so on the tape. When the camera reaches the problem area, Stop and back away a few feet. If you turned off the microphone earlier, remember to turn it back on. Put the VCR into record mode and let the tape roll for several seconds. Now move slowly toward the problem as you describe it and what is necessary to correct it. The camera has rotated some. And you can see water flowing. Wherever the water is, is the bottom of the pipe. This is the area of the pipe that has a small uh, reverse incline and it's actually referred to commonly as a belly, meaning the pipe is slightly sagged. And it's just before the connection of where the house lateral ties into the city main. The camera's underwater. You can see some of the particles floating around, and you can see the reflection of the water above. That's about one inch worth of water. And now we've pushed up to the joint, which is an elbow leading into the city main. And you can see that this Sagging in the line has actually exaggerated the gap in the joint, so much so that there's a coin stuck in the joint. It's hard to tell, but if it were a quarter, that would give you some idea of how deep that joint is and how much offset that is. So this line has been cleaned and is restored to whatever condition possible. The only thing is this particular section right here in the city portion of the area we described. The rest of it is in fine shape, has been completely restored. After the inspection, eject the tape, break off the record tab, and add a description of the customer's problem to the information on the label. It's good practice to make a second recording of the inspection for your own records. You can do this conveniently by recording as you pull the camera back out of the pipe. Whatever style of inspection you choose, here are a few key points to remember. The customer doesn't know what the inside of a pipe looks like, so move the camera slowly and describe everything the customer is seeing. Also, think about what your customer needs to see on the tape. In some cases, 
your customer will want to see the entire inspection recorded. Other customers, however, may only want to see the problem areas.